Oh man, guys, E3 was last week and it was crazy. You would not believe all of the insane new games and shit that were previewed. Look, if you're listening to this, then you're either looking forward to some hot new E3 news, or you know E3 was in early June and I am really late with this shit. This is Morning Perfect Base. I'm Van Velding. I'm going to work on my perfect base a little bit each week. And after a few months, we are going to see how much progress we've made. Today, I'm going to replace the ceiling and perfect bases core with glass. This is going to be a great metaphor for the gender-based discrimination many women still face in the workplace. But it will also open up the core and make it feel more natural during the daytime hours. Let's talk video games. I mean other video games. Mostly other video games. Doom Eternal. This is the sequel to Doom 2016, which I've heard nary a bad word of. The demo was like 100% gameplay, and it looked good. I appreciate a game that gets itself to the degree that the main character, by default, does not want to hear any of the storyline. Uh, they just want to murder demons because they're demons and fuck demons. Uh, for all of you watching who just watched Good Omens, I mean, fuck demons that aren't played by David Tennant, okay? Not every game can be what Doom is, and certainly any game that has set itself up poorly enough that you're shooting humans uh, requires some justification for why you're shooting humans. Uh, even though people playing it are fucked up enough that they would probably get angry if the core gameplay focused on anything but killing humans. Oh, can I not? Can I not face at the bottom? Is there like, no, like there's like a... There's like a stack of these that goes all the way down to the floor and I'm gonna crouch right the fuck through it. There we go, fucking shit. Uh, so right, people would probably be get angry about core gameplay that was about anything but killing their fellow man with guns, but, uh, I don't know, whatever the fucking point was, uh, most shooters could probably let you be a squid and or a kid and still let you exercise the same physical and intellectual muscles as any game where you shoot people without the paper-thin justifications or the creation of, ah, fuck. Uh, or the creation of narratives where other groups of humans justify the player, a stronger, faster, tougher, more accurate, immortal, regenerating, and altogether inherently, genetically, question mark, superior specimen, massacring them because said player has received the blessings of the game devs who realize players won't pay 50, 60 fucking dollars for their next game if the current one is too hard. But, you know, shooting robots with paint guns is SJW. Doom 2. Anyway, uh, Blair Witch. Is anyone going to say this? Like, is anyone going to say this about the Blair Witch? Or is it going to have to be me? Cheesy. Cheesy Christ. Okay, fine. If this is a real video game that's being made in 2019, then it's pretty fucking obvious the Blair Witch didn't kill enough people. Ghostwire Tokyo. It looks like the Rapture mixed with Silent Hill. The Rapture being the biblical literary rapture uh mixed with silent hill the video game and, and but silent hill where like it's a traveling show with a dash of whatever the fuck death stranding is i was hooked it looked like it had a unique take and a compelling world and it was a japanese game set in japan with tory gates but then the tagline comes and it says don't fear the unknown attack it and i'm like maybe shinzo ab isn't isn't the guy you need to go to for your cultural consultation on this one I mean, I was just talking about how science fiction's characterization of mankind as hating what it doesn't understand is true and dangerous to such an extent that it is actually fucking boring. But to build on that, uh, the role of responsible media is to appeal to our best natures and fuck that shit. I mean, I'd expect it to be the most morally neglig negligent game in show, but Gears of War 5 does a war crime. So maybe the real theme of this year's E3 was let's make Ben Velding vomit in his mouth a little bit. Deathloop. I am excited about Deathloop. It looks like a grindhouse themed shooter set on a human colony with a push and pull between corporate and populist power centers. No, 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 no. Stay away. Stay away. The twist is that the two main characters are trapped in a time loop and believe that killing each other is the only way out. Uh, in the trailer, they seem to kill each other a lot, so maybe they only remember the times that they die when the loop restarts. So if they win, they don't remember the previous loop. 
Um, and so they're each still trying to kill each other, and they just think that they're on a string of unbroken losses. Uh, I don't know. It's a fairly original premise. Uh, and despite not seeing any gameplay, I, I look forward to learning more about it. Uh, let's see. The Outer Worlds. Oh. Oh, oh God. Oh, I'm so sorry. I am so sorry. Whenever I was remembering Deathloop, I blended it in with the Outer Worlds trailer. So everything I said about the idea of being original and me being intrigued, that was the Deathloop stuff. Everything I said about colonies and corporate versus populist themes that made you drowsy, that's the Outer Worlds. All I can do to make the Outer Worlds look good is to add two words to transform it into a deadly efficient sleep aid. Morality system. Halo Infinite. I played a little bit of the first Halo, I think, on local multiplayer. Uh, I liked Red vs. Blue. Oh, I forgot you can do that. You put torches on glass now. Fuck me. Um, I really liked the pre-release hype for Halo 3. I, I think it was Halo 3. It had all the vets and the fake museums from Remaster Chief. Excellent. Fucking, fucking A on that drop, buddy. Uh... So I have no other relationship with this series, and by all accounts, it's boring gameplay stretched over repetitive story beats and soaked in the kind of tax toxic masculinity that raises new generations of emotionally clumsy school shooters. But I'm a fan of the Halo hype. I don't know why. Maybe it's my roots uh, in conservative Texas growing up. Uh, and I have an affinity for authoritarian figures, and Master Chief is just a gumbo of palatable facets of that authority. You know, who knows? I honestly don't did not know that they'd previously fished him out of space from the last time he was left in space. I thought he was there, and then they did Halo Wars in the prequel one, and that he was just now coming back, but no. He got lost in space, he got picked back up, he got lost in space again, and he's being found again. That is exceptional. Like, whenever I talk about reusing story beats, <laughs> there you go, uh... Anyway, I just hope the last marketing blitz set a high bar. Uh, and I hope that this marketing blitz can really meet that bar. Um, because, you know, it's it's been fun. I like watching the commercial. Anyway, Judgment. As I understand it, Judgment is like Yakuza, but not Yakuza. The only criticism I've ever heard about Yakuza games is that they're kind of Japani, which I get, and that sometimes they aren't Yakuza enough. So I guess Judgment is already committed to the latter, and I hope it is the right amount of Japan Japanese, Japanian, Nipponish. Anyway, Cyberpunk 2020. I made fun about it never getting made uh, like a year or two ago, <laughs> and I've heard the developers are problematic. And don't get me started on the meta discussion about the state of Cyberpunk as a genre. But Keanu Reeves won't save this, and honestly, it looks pretty boring. I'm sorry, but this thing would have to sink its fingers deep into the loam of the future society to make me interested. Watch Dogs, Anthem, Destiny, all these bullshit games take place in futures unshaken by apocalyptic calamities, and maybe they don't. I don't know. I wouldn't fucking care, because I don't give a shit about them. Um, cyberpunk means more to me than cybernetics and the gig economy smashed into neon lights and stupid guns like a four-year-old slamming action figures together and going now kiss a gta that's open world yeah but open world with all of the overwhelming bullshit of a wild and different future i i kind of want to be the cryogenic revivalist mary from transmetropolitan number eight i i actually really want that i want to get future shock from this game and i'm not gonna I mean, look, our present, our status quo exists as a contrivance of historical caprice. Assassins, explorers, generals, and conquerors are the chance clarity in a bifurcated chaos. Uh, the study of other cultures to understand that caprice, to understand that life, continues in many ways, in many cultures. Um, things about our society that we are afraid to let go of, that we catastrophize about losing... They are not that essential. And cyberpunk as an idea is kind of about that. It's, it's about ideas for the future that should piss people off, whether the devs believe in them or not. And I think that the future guns and neon lace jackets and Keanu Reeves, the great guy that he is, 
all clearly signal that Cyberpunk 2077 is about a cyberpunk aesthetic wrapped around another open world video game where you're schlub with upgrades doing side quests to put off the boring cutscene laden revenge story of a guy or a girl you met in the first scene of the game who died. But you know, I was wrong about this game before and especially whenever I'm being negative about things, I kind of wish that I'm wrong. So, you know, here's to it. Breath of the Wild 2, Breathe Out. I guess there's going to be a sequel to this. I mean, something which will either meet expectations or, and this option is better for me personally, hilarious shits on the goodwill of the original by changing a thing. Gears of... Oh, what? What? Huh? Oh, the thing is Zelda's haircut? Okay, yeah, that sounds about right. Uh, Gears of War 5. So Gears of War 5 or maybe Gears, Gears of War DLC. I don't fucking care. It starts with the surrender as part of an attack, which is a war crime. And you might say they live there, Ben Velding. But last I checked, this planet isn't even Earth. Humans moved here. But some bugs also lived here. And after four fucking games with clockwork battles, maybe the humans should all just fucking leave. I know I try to alternate between serious bitchy topics and fun bullshit topics here, and it is definitely fun bullshit topics turn here, but, uh, you know, I don't think it should be political to say you don't get to commit genocide because you built a house somewhere that folks already lived. The cost of not being a monster is that sometimes you have to pack your shit and go live in a different neighborhood. God damn it, zero for two. I honestly, I don't care about the health. I, it just wears my armor out a tiny amount every time. And it's also good practice. I mean, assuming you get better at it, it's good practice. Which, I mean, I guess we're going to have to see if it's good practice or not. Uh, I mean, no one likes people who are effectively evil. But after four fucking games of trying and apparently failing to go starship troopers on a planet that I can only assume is called Bloodhaven for Bugs X... It's a wonder how the humans in this game are sympathetic to anyone not actually named Marcus Phoenix or with a serious fetish for seeing militaries humiliate themselves in buckets of fail. Also, the lady in the trailer goes down and, like, needs saving by the dudes, but then the dudes go down and the lady just does fuck all as they save themselves. I, the good times that I have had playing co-op with friends who are into this kind of stuff aside, fuck this series. Star Wars Fallen Order. This one is made by EA. Yes, the same EA. Why are we even talking about this? Avengers. I think I have heard every variant on the space balls. You've captured their stunt doubles joke for this one. Uh, the Avengers game mimics the feel of the Marvel Universe, Marvel Cinematic Universe so faithfully. But then it changes the faces of the main characters and it skips... GameStop and Steam and starts getting distribution straight out of the Uncanny Valley. But worse than that, it's ripping off like X-Men storylines about superheroes being hated and feared, and the gameplay is probably still going to be a few steps removed from Marvel Ultimate Alliance. So I get that at least it's going to be available on something that's not the Switch, but superhero team games always feel generic because they have to accommodate so many power sets and like, oh, fucking fuck, dude. Don't fuck. Fuck you. I mean, this feels cheap, but, uh, you know, fuck them. I gotta put more lights in that brewing room. Like, part of the theme is that it was dark, but part of the theme was also that the mushroom texture would keep things from spawning on it. Um, and apparently this is the mushroom biome, not the mushroom chunks. I'm keeping it for the field, but I gotta put more sea pickles in there. Anyway... Uh, so they do all that stuff, and you gotta use whatever heroes to complete missions, so all heroes can complete all missions, so who gives a shit? And they go through a bunch of, they go through a checklist of locations in the, from the Marvel Universe, and... Look, Spider-Man games are great, because, oh hey, hey fellas, Spider-Man games are great, because they're built around Spider-Man. Remember that Hulk game from 10 to 15 years ago, where you could smash everything in New York City? Why could you do that? Because you were the fucking Hulk. That was the fun of it. So once you start, you know, saying, oh, we have to be able to complete this mission with Doctor Strange or Spider-Man or the Hulk, then everything kind of feels like nothing. And it's bad. Uh, Outlanders. It's the future, but oh no, there's been an apocalypse plus fire and some mystical shit. If only we have guns to shoot it all into okayness like in Call of Duty. No, wait, we do have guns to shoot it all into okayness, like in Call of Duty. 
Hooray. Watch Dogs Legion looks cool. It's set in London instead of America, thank God. Or, you know, whatever it is they have over there in Britain instead of God's. It's about average citizens dealing with a virtual police state. Uh, it lets you recruit grannies, okay? It lets you recruit grannies. Fuck all that other shit I just said. That's the hook, and it's a good fucking hook. You recruit citizens, and they permanently die if you get them killed. Remember... Ah, damn. I can never remember the name of that zombie game on the Xbox 360 download service. Like, Life, Death, Fortress, Rising, Outbreak, State of Decay. That's the one. State of Decay. State of Decay, you found survivors, and they had stats. And if they died, they stayed dead, and you level them up, and then... I, I really like that game, and I like that mechanic specifically because you remember how I bitched earlier about regenerating superior, etc. characters and first-person shooters? That. So I like the game that's very much based on, hey, look, average people have something to contribute, and you can recruit them to your team, etc., etc., so on and so forth. Um, it's probably going to be like they're all going to be fairly vetted. Like, you push your button, and it goes, they're not a bad guy. And then maybe one of them randomly is. I don't know. Like, part of the vetting process and running an underground resistance to a totalitarian police state. Um... I should say capitalist police state from the looks of the game. But regardless, like, that seems like a cool gameplay loop that people often neglect in constructing contrived stories about resistance to those sorts of organizations. Um, and I don't know. I think it'd be fun. Uh, Vampire the Masquerade Bloodlines 2. I think it's expected that I would say something about this uh, as someone who cut their tabletop role-playing teeth on White Wolf Games, Vampire the Masquerade 2nd Edition specifically. But I never played the first one despite all the praise for it and having it in my Steam library, so I don't have any expectations for the second one. I hope that it is as good as people say the first one was. Death Stranding. Uh, marketing for this game is probably subject to Xeno's Paradox, but I feel like I'm learning more about it with each new trailer while still being totally confused and excited. Uh, Death Stranding trailers make me feel like a dog that sees its owner walk into a kitchen and pick up literally anything. Xbox Scarlet. Yeah, we're getting a new Xbox. The The ninth generation of consoles is coming out, I guess. Holiday 2020. Can you believe the PlayStation 4 came out in 2013? Can you fucking believe that shit? That's nuts. It seems like just yesterday we were all picking up our torches and pitchforks uh, for Microsoft trying to force always online shit into the Xbox One as a backdoor method to reduce video game ownership to a licensing arrangement. I hope you still have those pitchforks. Not to Van Veld you too much. As for PlayStation, apparently Sony skipped all of E3 this year, which is just wild, man. It's wild. Anyway, that is it for today. Uh, keep asking questions and keep learning. just kidding i gotta talk about minecraft dungeons and minecraft earth like why would i not do that uh minecraft earth is like a pokemon go for minecraft you build things on a table then you implement them into an augmented reality you can interact with them somewhat once they're implemented but not very much allegedly some of the blocks can only be unlocked by doing quests that maybe require friends where you beat up mobs by clicking the sword icon on the screen and if my experience is any indication you then have to perform a running battle across a 50 meter square of dark and scarred land before you die so um, just like Pokemon Go. It sounds like it's for the people who liked Pokemon Go and it might get those people out of the house and into a space where they could conceivably meet people who would like the same things as them and that's good. The thought makes my skin crawl, but I know it's good for people to talk to other people in any method which narrows down the potential field of moist skeletons with talking tongues uh, to favor healthy human emotional exchange instead of tapping a uh, high pressure vein of dumb shittery and emotional scarring it is a good thing. It's good. It's fucking bullshit, and I hate it, but it's good. Ah, yeah. Heck yeah. That's the least efficient way possible to take down a fucking scaffolding, but whatever. Fuck it. Uh, finally, Minecraft Dungeons. It is an isometric Baldur's Gate, Neverwinter Nightsy thing with Minecraft aesthetics with mobs and tools. Uh, apparently your armor determines your movement speed and weapon specialty. You have short and long-range weapons. You have an artifact that does something, and as you level up, you put enchantments on your gear. Uh, I've always touted Minecraft's visual simplicity as a way to use consistent, simple aesthetics to serve gameplay instead of making cutting-edge graphics to... You know, I am actually, after years of playing Minecraft, still not clear on what cutting-edge graphics do for peop do for games other than provide visual models to support the selling of two briefly unsoiled body pillows to weirdos. 
but the Minecraft visual design philosophy could work for almost any game, so it's completely natural that it could be applied to another game. I do kind of want to play just because I, well, I like the visuals and I want to see what they do with the gameplay concepts. Uh, the characters we see the most of uses a hammer as a weapon and there are no hammers in Minecraft. So it's appealing for the novelty factor alone. Um, and anyway, that is it. That is that is really, really it. Um, so no kidding. Keep asking questions and keep learning shit.